Hello and welcome to sound design tutorial number three in which I have a proper pop filter. It's not exactly perfect, mostly because it's made out of a shirt, but it works. Anyway, today I'm going to be looking at a kind of interesting way of using citrus as a wavetable synth. Now, as a quick disclaimer, this sounds terrible. I made it in five seconds just to demonstrate what's going on. And that is that if you keep an eye on this section here, it starts off as a sine wave, and as I cycle through to operator 5, it evolves. Although the gap between 1 and 2 is pretty massive, but it evolves from 1 to 5, basically, and the X knob is supposed to cycle through it. So if I play this back... This isn't a very good sound, but it demonstrates the concept, and hopefully, when I make a new one, just now, it will sound a bit better. So, I'm going to load citrus, not toxic biohazard. Citrus, 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 okay. Load the default preset. And the way this works is that you can have a really stupid, ridiculously complicated waveform in operator 5 and a simple one in operator 1. And if you click this little arrow here and click Morph Oscillators 1 to 5, which is something that not a lot of people know about, then it morphs them all between each other like you saw a second ago. So I'm going to pitch this whole thing down and turn up the out on operator 5, get rid of it on operator 1, so now I'm just listening to operator 5. And let's say I really, really like that, and that's exactly what I want to use. So I'm going to press more oscillators 1 to 5, and this looks better than the other one. This looks a bit more smooth. This might turn out okay, I think. So, how exactly do we get it to morph through them with the X knob? What we want to do is find some way of switching through each of them automatically using the X knob. And, if you were paying attention a second ago, you might have seen how I went about that. And the way I did it was in the volume section by assigning it to the X knob. So, if you don't know already, what this does basically is the X axis, this is a graph, and the X axis corresponds to the value of the X knob, and the Y axis is the volume of the operator, operator 1 in this case. So basically, as I turn the X knob, this vertical line here travels left and right, and the corresponding value of this line ends up as the volume. Uh, simply put, we want the volume to be up here and down everywhere else for operator 1. So for the first three columns, it's up, and for the rest of the grid, it's at 0. And then at operator 2, it's operator 2's turn to be on for three columns. And then it turns off for the rest. So what's happening is, when the knob's at the very bottom, you can see the... Okay, clearly you can't. That's because I'm in the random section! I'd accidentally been drawing all the lines in the RAND section. I should have drawn them in the MOD X section. We return to the action after moving the two shapes I just drew to MOD X. Okay, and now we just need to go through the rest of the operators doing the exact same thing. Now, the number of columns isn't a multiple of 5, but I can't be bothered to fix that problem, so I'm just going to make number 5 be 4 long instead, and you're just going to have to sort of deal with it. So, now I'm going to play my note. Oh no, it's silent. Why is that? That's because none of the operators are going out in the matrix. I haven't turned any of their volumes up. So all of them, 1 to 5, should be going out max. And now, I can hear it. So I just need to turn the X knob to switch through all five. It works. However, there's one very, very obvious problem, and that is that 
It's really noticeable when it goes from one wavetable to the next. We want to fix that by making them crossfade. Instead of just being a hard line that cuts straight to the next one, it should instead... Is there a gap here? No. Or here? No. Okay, so it should instead fade. And the way to do this is... I'm going to make this too long, like this. And the second one is going to do the same. There we go, yeah. So this is going from top to bottom across two columns, and at the same time, two is going from bottom to top at two columns. And then it goes down for two. And while this is going down for two, this one's going up for two. Although, I understand that the numbers don't quite check out here. So we'll have some problems to solve in a moment, but we don't need to worry about that. And finally, number five. Okay, well what we can do, I guess, is just move everything one to the right. Balls. Balls! There we go. And now 1 and 5 are the same length. So we just accidentally solved a nice problem there. So now it's much, much smoother. That's actually quite nice. However, not all of them work out quite as well as this one did. A lot of the time you'll notice the volume jumping up and down as you turn the knob. So, in order to fix this, kind of a hacky, shitty fix, but a fix nonetheless, slap a Maximus on it and crank up the compression. So it should be pretty much a brick wall. <laughs> 